Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and this is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers for joining this tribe. Thank you for being here with us. We embrace you. We want to let you know that we love you and we're here to support you. And thank you for joining and finding something relevant um, that I would have to say concerning your situation. Today I wanted to talk about um, really the void in the narcissist, that they are a void individual. And um, I say that because um, many of you try so hard to change that narcissist, whether you're in the relationship now or whether you were in it, you always think, what could I have done? What could I have done to change the, you know, how can most of you are looking at the relationship as rescuing another individual? That's not why you get into a relationship to rescue an individual. That's not a puppy at a, at a, a pound. That's not a puppy at a, or, or, or a dog or a cat that needs to be adopted out of a humane society. They're human beings. They're adults. However, they have their, their, uh, uh development arrested or emotionally arrested they have arrested development <clears throat> and a lot of them particularly in the situation in, in which I was familiar with a lot of them have been traumatized you know as uh, young kids now not all of them but every single one of them that I've ever dealt with on a clinical basis those that I've had personal experiences with uh, those that I've had a uh, professional relationship with, like in the military, as a contractor, those that have worked in Department of Social Services, in mental health fields, you know, a lot of those individuals that I knew clinically, professionally, personally, those individuals were all um, severely either sexually or physically abused, rejected, neglected, abandoned. A lot of them had childhood trauma, different types of childhood trauma. Now, we know that not every single one of the narcissists have all been um, physically or sexually uh, uh, traumatized. Some of them were actually raised that way. And I did a podcast yesterday in which I was talking about um, uh, one of the doctors, one of the researchers uh, made a point of saying that all narcissists have both traits, the cerebral and the somatic traits. It's just one is more dominant than the other. And in a lifetime, as they get older, sometimes they switch from one dominant to the other and the other one becomes the dominant trait. Um, and also, um, depending on what was cultivated as a child, a lot of times that becomes the dominant um, of the narcissistic personality disorder. Prime example, um, I knew one individual uh, in particular, I knew his history. And he was raised, he wasn't an ugly child. He was a, he was a very handsome little child. Um, he wasn't an ugly child, but he was very intellectual. And so the intellect, the cerebral was cultivated. So he became a very cerebral uh, narcissist. Later on, as he got older and he began to develop and uh, lost his glasses and, and he became very attractive, a very attractive young man. And he, he switched over to somatic and he realized that his looks, his charm, what he said, you know, his, you know, he used his intellect, but his charm. And so till this day, he is a severe somatic narcissist uh, with a plethora of uh, entourage of harem and supply, you know, source of supply. So involved in his looks and, and material things and women and, you know, attracting women and, you know, everything is about, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, wealth and, and this wealth that really doesn't exist. And that he's not wealthy, but, you know, most people that are around him will assume that he's a wealthy individual um and but he was raised and he that the cerebral was cultivated you know so the the intellect was uh, uh cultivated so he's able to switch back and forth his main dominant feature is somatic however he can switch over to uh, uh cerebral anytime he wants to because he uses his intellect to manipulate and so and he's quick thinker but and but not everyone is like that you have to remember that empathy is is cultivated you know when you teach your children no soft touch so you know our kids grab and i talked about this before my kids used to grab the animals I'm like oh no 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 don't don't grab the animal soft touch soft touch oh i in german we say i i i i mean soft soft or you know or sweet sweet or soft soft um and you know or you know you hug them when they cry and you comfort them and so you're teaching them that you know you're teaching them that when they cry when they hurt you comfort them you know mommy or daddy comforts you and oh it's gonna be okay give me kisses oh you got a boo-boo let me kiss your boo-boo it's gonna be okay and so when you pretend like you're crying oh you oh you hurt my you know they come like oh uh, and then they pat you you know so they learn that empathy well with a narcissist a narcissist number one is void 
on the inside. You know, that's why they attach to people that have certain attributes that they desire. You know, they're void and they're truly, they don't have inner peace. Their whole internal system is full of turmoil and chaos. They have no sense of peace. They have no sense of real joy on the inside of them. They connect with, that's why they usually drain people. Not usually, they drain people. You know, they drain them of their emotions. They drain them of their joy. They drain them and, and, and you begin to look sick. Some of you looked at the pictures. You know, I showed you pictures of myself, you know, where you were just literally drained, you know, emotionally drained because they are an empty, it's like an abyss, just an empty hole. It doesn't matter what you put in, it never stays, is never enough to fill the pit. That's why they grow bored easily. Once you can't fuel them with the, the fuel that they need, they move on from person to person to person to person. And of course, you know, if they have a home base or the primary source and, and he or she is willing to stay and make it work and I see the best in them and I can change them and I have to fight for this and and you're realizing that after 20 30 40 years that individual is still exactly the same they have not changed they're still doing the same things they're doing from the beginning now most of you got them you know most of you got them you know whether it was your husband or whether it was your wife you got them before the narcissism had really gotten so intense or so bad but within time you notice that in the relationship they got worse and worse and worse to a point where a lot of you like I don't even recognize this individual this is not who I got with no because they have attributes of other people you know they they look at you know they don't have they they're innerly void dark and so they they watch people and they pick up on the characteristics or they mirror you know but in in all true fairness they're not joyfully happy peaceful people they're not they're oh excuse me they're walking someone told me make sure I drink tea so I'm going to listen to him. One of the kings said, make sure I drink tea when I'm on here. So, um, and, I, and, and I respect that. But they're void on the inside. They're empty on the inside. It's like those of you that understand real estate, it's like purchasing a home that is an arm, an interest-only loan. You can put so much money in that interest-only loan, in that interest-only payment, the house will never belong to you ever because you're paying an interest only loan so you're never paying on the principal of the house for you to even own the house so being in a relationship with a narcissist is like having an interest only loan is borrowed time and you're investing all you have to maintain something that is never going to give you anything back and will never belong to you and so hopefully this has helped this is a very short video because normally on tuesdays tuesdays is my monday uh and so i wanted to come on really quick because i am booked but i wanted to come in and talk to you guys and another thing i want to say so it probably add to the minutes on the on the video but another thing you have to understand your value now sometimes people confuse confidence with arrogance and some people do go overboard you know because there is that thin line and some people do go overboard when it comes to confidence versus arrogance you've got to be confident in who you are you know you've been through a lot dealing with a narcissistic relationship where you have been so devalued you you know a lot of you have lost your value your sense of self-esteem your sense of worth some of you are gorgeous very attractive individuals and you dress like old folk you know you you dress like i mean like you don't care about yourself anymore. A lot of you said it to you, you, you dress, but you don't even care about your appearances anymore. You know, you look like the Crypt Keeper, you know, and yet you're beautiful behind all that dreary gray look, looking like one of the members of the Adams family, you know, and some of you have just lost that umph, that, that spark in your life. You have to understand your value. You know, you are an original design, you are, there's no one else. I don't care how many people look like you, act like you, talk like you. You are an original design. There's nobody else. It's funny because my, my pastor just preached about this, but there is, you are an original design. There is no one else in this world like you. No one has your fingerprints. No one thinks the way that you think. No one has taken your life experience or had your life experience and thinks the way that you think. Nobody can do the things that you do. Some people haven't even survived the things that you've survived. You are not a counterfeit. 
You're not a bootleg. You are an original. And you don't go into a designer store and, you know, designer boutique or designer, you know, you're dealing with Louis Vuitton and Versace and, and, and those that are, you know, you can name all the name brands. You don't go and bargain with them over the price of their product. You pay for the quality and the name of that product. They understand their value. They understand the quality of the coach bags. I didn't know, I think it's the coach bag. I didn't know with the coach bag that once you buy it from like the designer that you can send it back and have the bag clean for free. That is what they give you for investing in their product. You can get it cleaned and I think you can get it repaired for free. You know, this is what they give you back for investing in their product and they understand the value of their product and they're going to take care of you. And it's really a thank you, a gratitude to you for understanding the value and investing in the value of their product. Well, if a designer purse, you know, if they do that for designer purses, then why are you not, you know, that valuable? Because you are an original. Everybody should not be in your circle. Everybody should not be in your ear. Everybody should not be in your DM or your inbox. Everybody should not have access to you all the time. Everybody does not have access to me all the time. Even my own leader, I have access to her when I need her or because we do business together, but she's not just accessible like that. She has, I value her. I value her time. I value what she's doing in the community. I value what she's doing. I don't have time to pull on her like that, nor does she have time for me to pull on her like that. We speak, and that's why a lot of you guys are saying, hey, make sure that you send Apostle Sadler this message. She doesn't have time like that, and I don't have time like that, and I value her time. So you see, because I put value on her. I, she, she will demand respect. And when I say respect, she demands respect and you will respect her. But I put value on her. And so because I put value on her, there's certain things I will not say. There's certain things I will not do. I'm military trained. She comes in a room, I stand up because I honor her. I respect her. She has put into my life, you know, in order for me to be on camera like this. So she has put in my life. She has poured out in my life. She has shown me that I was valued. And so because she showed me how valuable I was, how can you not value that? Someone is putting something in you and how can you not value and honor that? And so if you can do that with a, a, a relationship with a mentor, a leader, you know, a parent, you know, she's my spiritual parent. She's my mentor. If, if, if I think like that, you know, think about how you should think about yourself. That's not arrogance. That's confidence. Everybody can't be in my circle. Everybody cannot be on my telephone. I don't answer all emails. I, just, I don't have time for it. You know, as much as I love you guys, and I don't, don't get me wrong, as much as I love you guys, I don't have the time, you know, to go in and answer everybody's email. You know, a lot of times I have to focus on the clients that are coming in, but you have to have enough value. I have enough value to understand what happened to me you know, in the past and how much I was devalued and how can someone else put that much devalualization? There we go. <laughs> I don't know if I just made up a word devalualization. How can someone devalue you so much, you know, that you accept how they see you? Your thought is not relevant to me. I don't care how you see me. I know I have value. My no means no, and I have boundaries. And that's how you have to think, you know, you are, and, and I know some of you guys are not Bible. I understand that. I understand some of you guys are not believers, but I was wonderfully and marvelously created. You know, if you think about this, go look at the at the the structure of the inner ear. How the how uniquely the inner ear was created, or how your body. I was just watching something on um, um, stomach juices. You know, the the acid in your stomach. You know, that's like battery acid, and it shows how it burns through stuff. But yet your body is able to contain it in your stomach and not kill you. You know, you're not going to die. You don't feel the pain. The, the endorphins, the chemical in your brain keeps you from hurting every day as your body is functioning like a little engine. You know, you don't hear the ticks and stuff, you know, so you don't feel your body operating. So you are a unique design. You are a designer's brand. And you have to let people, not in an arrogant way, but you have to, you have to put respect on your name. There you go. Like Birdman said, you got to put some respect on your name. You know, you're not going to disrespect me and they should not disrespect you. You've got to have value for yourself. And some of you have lost your value because you begin to believe what someone else said, specifically the narcissist that you were involved with. You have more value just because they don't value. You don't mean that you don't have value. If I bless you and give you a Maybach, a Mercedes, um, um, is it a Maybach? The Mercedes is the Maybach. 
is made by the Mercedes. If I give you a Maybach, you know, I would expect that you have, you understand the value of that car or a Rolls Royce. I would expect that you have, you understand the value of that car, especially with beautiful Rolls Royces. I would expect you to understand the value of that car. The Phantom, oh, that's a beautiful car. But I would expect you to have value and understand the value of that car. Why would you go and put low profile tires and spinners on the on the rims. Put spinners and then you turn around and put Christmas lights, all them lights down at the bottom of the Rolls Royce and, and just tear a beautiful car up like that. That means you have no value. You don't understand the value of that vehicle. And a lot of people get in a relationship but they don't understand their value. So they allow people you know, to handle them any kind of way without being able to step back. You know, if you're in a relationship, it's time for you, you know, to look at, are you being valued? And a narcissist devalues you as soon as they get with you. You know, sooner they, that's just like driving a car off the lot. It begins to depreciate as soon as it comes off the lot. You know that. So as soon as they connect with you, you begin to depreciate to them. They devalue, all of a sudden you have begin to depreciate. And you know, these are empty people. Remember that. Remember, you have value. You are a designer's choice. You are a designer brand. There's no one out there like you. No one out there like you. Nobody. Remember that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell so you know whenever I upload new videos. I come on live on Sundays between 8 and 9 o'clock, depending if I am in town. So sometimes it's a little hard because I'm not, I'm coming from out of town, coming back in. Uh, and also I have two Facebook uh, Facebook uh, pages excuse me. Uh, one is my professional Facebook page is psychological health consultants and services. The other one is my book, overcoming narcissist abuse. My book is unmasking the illusion of perfection. Please go to Barnes and Noble or Amazon and order my book. It is, uh, I, it is Christian. It is a Christian book, but what the Christian part of it is, is that I provide you with Christian encouragement, biblical scriptures and encouragement to help you. But these are real story of real people that have experienced, have been groomed, have had narcissistic parents and grandparents were groomed, things that they were, that were said, how they were thinking, they didn't understand how they were thinking and how their children became victims to a narcissist. And so please go order the book. Give it to someone. It's a very nominal fee. You can get ebook. You can get Kindle. You can get it in your hand. And do know I will be with the beautiful Miss Tierra Carpenter, who is the CEO and founder of Project Identity Inc. dot org. Go to her fa uh, her um, web page. Not a, yeah, her web page. www dot Project Identity Inc. dot org. Go to events. The flyer is going to pop up uh, where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in Greensboro, North Carolina, November 16th with her. You can hit the um, buy the tickets. It's a it's a low fee, you guys. It's $25 general admission and it's $10 for students. If you can't be there, go look at her web uh, webpage and look and see what she's doing for young people. Because if we had her in our life when we were younger, I'm quite sure that we would not have been through some of the things that we have been through. And so she is a woman of her time. This is a young woman doing a major, having a major impact, you know, but we need to undergird her. We need to support this young woman, African-American, beautiful woman, in, intelligent woman, you know, educated woman who's helping our children, helping our young people age six to I think 30 plus. So please, you know, if you can't come invest and donate to her, help her out, you guys. Okay, let's make that our mission for this year. Help her out, you guys. Okay, undergird her. And if you're coming out there, I would love to meet you. Bring your book. I try to bring some books with me um, and when I come. Thank you so much. Also, look in the links below and you will find some of you have asked uh, my Cash App and PayPal if you'd like to donate. Thank you so much for thinking of me and doing that for me. And also, you can find for those of you that are looking for counselors and you can't really get out of your home or you don't want to get out of your home and it's more convenient to do it via uh, FaceTime, Skype, telephone, go to betterhelp.com backslash Dr. Carmen. It is a sponsored link for me. Um, and go and you can vet your counselors. I think the first week is free. If you're having financial difficulties, they'll work with you and give you a discounted price. You can vet counselors, put in trauma professionals, uh, those that understand domestic violence and psychological abuse. Don't put in their narcissist abuse. Talk to them and ask them, do you understand, you know, and, and parental alienations, whatever you want to talk about, put it in layman terms, you know, and they may know what you're talking about. Miss Arlene from Canada said that um, the counselor she connected with understands narcissist abuse. You know, she vetted it and they understand narcissist abuse. Gave her a discounted price um, because of financial um, reasons. 
And on top of that, the first week was free. And so check it out. Go try it. See if you like it. Some people can't afford coaching and some people need counseling versus coaching. You know, so hopefully this has helped you. Make sure you go check out my mentor's uh, YouTube channel and subscribe and share. She provides you narcissist abuse uh, information uh, from a biblical and spiritual per uh, perspective. She is the presiding prelay, which is the senior pastor of Into His Chambers Global Ministries. Uh, she has several churches and many ministries under her and has a church in Nigeria. She is in Af no, she's in London at this particular time. So she's always traveling. So, you know, you guys stay tuned, but go and subscribe to her YouTube channel. It is Helen Sadler destiny helper and make sure you share it a lot of you said that um her and i partner together i stay on the clinical side she stays on the spiritual side the biblical side but you said that you know combined together you guys have really begun to heal and you've gotten a lot out of it and i'm so grateful you know support her like you support me thank you so much share the videos and you guys are starting off your week so go be great